Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. And today I'm going to show you some basic maintenance issues uh, on your Creality brand hot ends. This is applicable to the hot end that's used on the Ender 2, the Ender 3, the Ender 4, the Ender 5, and the CR10 series and the CR20. Uh, before we get started, please click that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner if you would. So let's get started. I'm just going to show you this on a spare hot end I have rather than try to film this on an actual printer. Um, it's going to be a lot clearer doing it this way. Um, when this hot end is mounted, you're going to have two screws, one here and one here that mounts it to the movable carriage on the X axis. Um, so that's the only difference here is there's two screws missing. Other than that, this is identical to what you're going to find on your printer. Um, I want to show you how to replace the heater cartridge and the thermistor on this. Um, there's a good chance one or both will break or stop working properly throughout the life of your printer. And rather than replace the entire hot end assembly, it's a lot cheaper just to replace these two small items. Um, I always keep a few spares on hand and especially with the thermistor, it's got such thin wiring on it and it doesn't take much. Uh, even if the wire doesn't break completely, if it just starts wearing out um, to the point where it's increasing the resistance of the voltage passed on it, uh, that's going to throw your temperature measurements off. So uh, if you notice you're having some problems where it seems like it's uh, running hotter than what it's reading on the LCD and stuff, you may just want to try swapping out your thermistors on your hot end and see if that uh, resolves the issue for you. So, uh, to get started, you're going to need just to yank off the uh, silicone uh, insulator, the little sock that's on the bottom here, just set that aside. Um, the heater cartridge runs left to right, bleh, wish I could talk, uh, left to right through the heater cartridge. It's held in place by this little grub screw here. Um, so just, if you're going to remove the heater cartridge, use the hex wrench that came with the printer loosen that grub screw a turn or two you don't need to take it out and your heater cartridge should slip out now if it's been in use for a while and you've gotten any molten plastic up in there it may be stuck there is a hole on the opposite side all you got to do is use another hex wrench and help coax that out a little bit but that's all you've got to do to remove the old heater cartridge um, you can get batches of these on Amazon. I will link heater cartridges, hot ends, and thermistors in the video description below. To put your new uh, heater cartridge in, just do the reverse order of taking it out. Slide it all the way in. Now you want to make sure it's as close to being flush on this side as possible. You don't really want it going through because you don't want to put stress on those wires being right at that uh, drilled edge. So what I do is I keep my finger on that edge. That'll keep it poking out just slightly on that side. Then just take your hex wrench and tighten down on that grub screw. And you do want that tight. You do not want this coming loose while you print. Um, that heater cartridge gets extremely hot. And if that comes loose, that is a fire hazard. One nice thing about the Creality design, and this is why I do not modify uh, my fan shrouds on mine, is the Creality setup, when you put the fan shroud cover on in place, it's blocking that heater cartridge. If that grub screw would come loose, the heater cartridge cannot slide out all the way and become a fire hazard and dangle free. The way Creality has that shroud set up, it's actually blocking that heater cartridge if you use the stock design. So that is an important safety feature because it's preventing a thermal runaway from occurring with that setup. Some of the aftermarket, that, uh, or not aftermarket, but um, custom design fan shrouds that you can find on Thingiverse don't block that properly and can allow that to come free completely. So. Um, it's a safety feature that I don't know if Creality intentionally did that or not, but it's something from their design that it actually does prevent that from backing out all the way. And I do like that a lot. It's a good peace of mind, in addition to having thermal runaway protection, but this way it doesn't become an issue. Now, um, this is a little bit more delicate setup. This is your thermistor. Your thermistor consists of two wires going into a glass bead. That glass bead fits into a small drilled a hole on the side here and the glass bead um, 
when it's cold, it has more resistance. So if you pass voltage through this, um, it's going to have a higher resistance now at room temperature than it will when the heater block is heated. As that resistance drops, that variation is how the machine tells what temperature your heater block is and knows when to apply current to the heater cartridge and when not to to keep it hot. Um, this screw here is never to be cranked down tight. It's very loose. It's only meant to keep those wires from backing out during printing. You never want to really tighten this because what you can do is one of two things. You can either accidentally break one of the thin wires in here from the pressure and you won't get any temperature reading at all because a broken wire would be 100% resistance or you're going to cut through this plastic insulation with the edge of uh, the screw and that's going to short it out and that's going to tell it that it's too hot. Um, either way, it'll ruin the thermistor. So this screw, when we take this out, when we go to put it back in, it's only going to be finger tight right up to the point where it touches those wires and then you stop. But take that out. And this thermistor here, you can see here, it's just, let me get something there that should be able to see it. It's just a small glass bead. It's very fragile, so you got to be careful with this. Not only is the uh, tip fragile, but the wiring is super, super thin and can break easily. So when you put your new thermistor in, it's just going to go in about that length there. You're, it's going to be straight. You're going to bend it over, and it doesn't need to go in far, but you just need that entire glass bead assembly hidden up in there. Once that is done, you're going to put the retaining screw back on. And you want to make sure that these wires are underneath that screw. Um, the whole point here is to keep those from backing out. So I've just turned this to where it's barely touching, uh, but it is barely touching those wires now. And that'll do its job. It'll keep it from backing out. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is apply some captain tape to this. And this is just an added safety measure. Um, I know some of the Creality printers are coming with this on it now. Some don't. Uh, but I do this to all of mine when I do any work on the hot end and it just um, will help keep that thermistor from popping out. You don't want that to happen because if that thermistor comes out, it's going to read room temperature. And that is what sets up uh, one of the potential ways your printer can experience a thermal runaway. It sees the thermistor as reading room temperature. It thinks it's not sending enough current to the heater block so it just keeps pumping current in and you'll overheat. Now um, all of the Creality printers are currently shipping with thermal runaway protection so that's not an issue uh, but you also don't want to rely entirely on the software here. Um, if you can do something simple like this uh, to prevent the mechanical issue behind it from ever occurring, that's just one more safeguard for you. So this is just Captain Tape. I will link it in the Amazon uh, link section of this video. Um, this is a high temperature tape. They developed it for the space program, the Apollo program. Uh, but it will withstand the high temperatures here of the thermistor and the heater block uh, wires getting hot from the uh, heater block. So I'm just going to tape these up. And what this will also do is help keep these uh, thermistor wires from separating and pulling apart where they could sometimes um, uh, hop the edge of that screw, the rim of that screw. So I'm just taping these together just like that. And that'll keep these from wiggling around and uh, coming around from that, the, uh, like I said, coming around the edge of that screw and hopping out. Um, do one more check here. Unscrew that just slightly and then just barely rotate it down finger tight until it touches those wires and stop. No tighter than that. And that's it. That's all there is to replacing your heater cartridge and your thermistor. Okay, one last thing I want to show you here is this grub screw here. This can come loose. And when it does, boy, that's on tight. Let's see if we can get that loose and I can demonstrate. Um, there we go. When this comes loose, your hot end can wiggle a little bit. This piece here, especially if these two screws aren't in tight. 
if that wiggles, that's going to possibly cause some drag on your prints and increase stringing. So if you're if you've done uh, if you followed my hot end video where I show you how to uh, fix the Bowden tube gap, and you've done all that, you've done everything else, and you're still experiencing a little stringing, check this uh, grub screw. Odds are it's come loose. And this part down here is wiggling a little bit on you. So all you need to do is make sure that this grub screw is tight and then double check the two retaining screws here and here and you'll be good to go. So that's it for this episode of Tuma 3D Printed Horrors. Please click that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner.